Uh, right now, though, very pleased to have with us in studio Darren Lasord, NRA ILA's manager of hunting policy, but also a guy who has been working for years on the issue of right to carry in the state of Wisconsin. How are you doing tonight, Darren? Doing pretty well, Cam. Thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, for coming on the program. Uh, boy, I don't even know where to get started with it. I mean, there's been so much craziness in Wisconsin uh, beyond the right to carry issue, and it looks like they're getting ready to get crazy at the Capitol again. I just saw that a judge has approved uh, a, a permit, or, or somebody approved a permit in Madison to set up basically a tent city on the Capitol grounds. Yeah, I <laughs> wish it was Joe Arpaio's tent city where they couldn't <laughs> leave. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm going back there Sunday night, and it's going to be a mess. You literally can't move around the Capitol. You can't get to your hotel. You can't cross the street. And these people are just as aggressive and uh, asinine as you can get. Uh, from what I understand from staff out there, if you wear a suit, you're going to get spit on multiple times during a day. So I'm not going to react well to that, I don't think. Wow. Yeah. Uh, wear a raincoat, <laughs> perhaps. I think uh, I'm going to be lobbying in jeans and a T-shirt for the rest of the month, actually. <laughs> all, right, um, all right. So on the right to carry issue, you had uh, yesterday the police chief in Milwaukee, uh, Ed Flynn, uh, criticizing concealed carry uh, once again. Uh, and he, he called, uh, he said that, that basically the legislators in Wisconsin need adult supervision. Yeah. Ed Flynn's been a problem for years. Uh, this is the same. If anyone needs adult supervision, it's the chief of police in Milwaukee. This is the man who a couple of months ago said he will direct his officers to take citizens down at gunpoint if they're complying with the law, complying with the Constitution, and carrying firearms openly for their self-defense. You're talking about someone who's dangerous to society and who needs more than adult supervision? That's Chief Flynn. Yeah. Yeah, I, I yeah, I mean, you know, that that is incredible that this is the guy who said, even if you're obeying the law, that's right. you're going to the ground. That's right. But but he's the adult and and he's evidently the adult. So this is a man who literally doesn't know the difference between good guys and bad guys. He, he doesn't. And that's why he's talking about the legislature like he is talking mm -hmm. like about the governor like he is. They want to pass a law that allows good people to carry firearms in a discreet manner to defend themselves and their family, and he's saying that blood's going to flow in the streets, fender benders turn into shots, stuff we haven't seen in any of the other 40 right-to-carry states. Right. He's ignoring all of them because he evidently trusts the citizens of Wisconsin less than legislators and policymakers and all of those other states. Um, so it's crazy stuff, and uh, you'd expect more from a government official, especially a chief of police who's responsible for enforcing the laws and someone who has as much power as he has. You'd expect better conduct, and it's scary stuff, really. Yeah. I mean, how, how are things going right now? I know the uh, story came out earlier today, uh, uh, Governor Walker uh, saying that he would like to see a bill with uh, uh, training requirements and, and permits. Uh, but he said that uh, he, he he would sign, uh, you know, he, that doesn't necessarily mean that he wouldn't sign other legislation, but uh, uh, he said something like that's what he would like to see the focus on. How are well, things going? Well, it's been a very, very tough last two months, um, unfortunately. Much tougher than we expected. It's always been tough. It's been 10 years of, of battle there um, since 2001, three iterations of this. So where we're at right now and what I think the governor was reacting to is that after going and meeting with every legislator in the building mm -hmm. uh, multiple times, it looks like the votes are there for a bill that requires training. Unfortunately, we were not for a training mandate, includes a license and a background check. So it's going to be a system like the 39 other states that are shall issue states. Um, and it's going to be a very refined system. It's going to be streamlined. Uh, it's going to be easy for good people to get permits. It's going to be inexpensive. The training is going to be like Florida's, which is the model for the country. That state's issued 2 million permits over 26 years. 168 have been revoked for firearms-related offenses, most of those being status offenses where someone carries into a post office, for instance. They're not violent offenses. But if you look at those 2 million people who and 168 criminal offenses, mm -hmm. it'd be the safest city in the world if those 2 million people represented a city somewhere on the planet. So it's a great success. We know the model is going to work. But I think the governor was really reacting to where the votes are in the legislature. That wasn't his personal feeling. Um, he's been extremely strong throughout. He said he would sign constitutional carry. It's just that the votes aren't there in the legislature for yeah. that. So we're getting very close, I think, to a deal. And we need to get this done before they break for summer because people need to protect themselves and their families. Yeah. And, and <laughs> Darren, I mean, if you had, if, if, could you have predicted how, how Wisconsin's uh, political landscape would look? I mean, the, you know, a year ago, 
uh, before the Republicans took back the uh, the legislature. Uh, and, and now all of a sudden, then you had the, the, the budget fight, which I think is, you know, really, that has to have affected every bill and every vote because you've got, you know, uh, recall petitions against uh, six Republican state senators, against three Democratic state senators. Now they're, the, the Democrats are talking about, okay, when the deadline comes, we're going to try to file a recall petition against Scott Walker. I mean, all of this has happened. The state Supreme Court race, all of this in the past, you know, five or six months. It is pure chaos out there. And to be <laughs> honest, I would have never, never thought there'd be a situation where concealed carry might be the lesser of a multitude of controversial issues. Right. Um, because back in the day, it was unheard of. When in 2003, 2005, in a committee called Joint Finance, we would have 100 amendments offered to our bill, all bad amendments, but those would be offered to concealed carry. It was unheard of in the day. I mean, they might have 25 or 30 on a controversial issue just mm -hmm. to try to poke at the Republicans who are trying to do the right thing in some cases. Um, but in this situation, um, it is just pure chaos out there. They don't have any bipartisan votes. This is going to be the first bipartisan proposal in months there because we're expecting about a third of the Democrats in the Senate to vote for this yeah. and probably maybe less than a third in the Assembly to vote for it, the Democrats. But it's going to be a bipartisan bill, and that's unheard of in today's age because every single bill is a war between parties, not the issue. Yeah, that's I that that's pretty amazing. Uh, if you could actually get uh, that, that might be the first vote since a budget repair bill where to actually have Democrats and Republicans vote on the same side. Well, and I and I think that's going to be the case, and I think that's why it's going to probably be a little smoother in on the I'm I'm hoping it's going to be smoother on the Assembly and Senate floors when this does get to the floor, mm -hmm. because I don't think that the Democrat leaders who are very anti-gun are going to want to make their own members look bad by saying that blood's going to flow in the streets, fender banners turn into shootouts, all that, because they know a good portion of their own caucus is going to vote for this bill. Okay. What about the, 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 the timing? I mean, like you said, you want to get this done before the summer recess. When does that happen? Starts at the end of June. And we cannot allow it to be pushed that far back because, of course, we know there are going to be some bumps in the road. There already have been many bumps in the road. There are mm. going to be more. Um, and so we cannot allow this to get past the, too far past the middle of June. We need to allow some room for um, mishaps toward the end of the process. But, of course, during the summer break, they don't come back until fall. I've talked about the two th since 2002 when the Senate Democrats shut session down two days early to deny us a vote on the Senate floor. Yeah. There have been 125,000 violent crime victims. That's rape, robbery, aggravated assault, murder victims. That's greater than the population of Green Bay. So we don't need, we can't stand to allow that much time and more, cr more victims to occur without them being able to defend themselves. So we can't allow two or three more months. And then, of course, their recall elections. The Republicans and the Democrats who are going to vote for this need this vote in order to bring the core groups out during a recall election to reelect them. All right. Let me ask you another uh, question about how this is, you know, the, the communications fight uh, in, in Wisconsin, because it seems like, you know, look, if you're in a state, if you're in one of two states that don't have any form or fashion of any carry laws, uh, maybe if you're in the media, you don't have a lot of experience with the carry laws. But uh, I've heard from several of our listeners in Wisconsin who say, oh, these radio hosts are killing me. These conservative radio hosts are coming out against you know, constitutional carry, they're coming out against uh, 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 the uh, concealed carry without, you know, hours and hours of training. Uh, are we seeing that? And, and what, what, what can gun owners do? I mean, should gun owners be trying to educate these, these hosts who are perhaps unfamiliar with the laws of other states? They really should. Um, it's embarrassing to see them do that. They should be embarrassed with their own conduct. Um, they are doing exactly what the radical liberals are doing, and that is acting on total lack of education, um, total emotion. And what they should know is that the nine states that don't have training mandates that are shall issue states yeah. haven't seen any problem whatsoever, including Pennsylvania and Indiana between the two have a million active permits. They aren't seeing any problems. We aren't seeing any problems in the 40 right to carry states, regardless of what their model is, regardless of what their law says. So for those guys not to learn from that huge case study is embarrassing for them. And yes, our members should be actively hammering them and telling them why, telling those radio hosts why they should be embarrassed with their own conduct. Yeah, I, I, I confess, I don't understand it. Um, and and I, if, I'm, if I'm confronted with an issue that I don't know a lot about, uh, I actually call somebody who does know a lot about this, which is why you're on the program here instead of me just making stuff up about what's sure. going on in Wisconsin. Have any of those hosts reached out to you? Have they said, Darren, come on the show and tell us what this is about? 
the, and that's a good question. Those ones have not. The ones who are relatively good on our issue and yeah. well educated, like Vicki McKenna out, out in Madison, mm -hmm. she's very strong, pro Second Amendment, very well educated, good conservative host. Um, she's reached out to me, but these people who don't know what they're talking about don't do that. But I agree with you. I mean, it's unfortunate whether we're in airports or wherever else, people have very strong opinions on guns, whether they're educated or not. They're going to have strong opinions. Right. If someone talks to me about nuclear power, for instance, I think I like <laughs> nuclear power. I think I support it, but I'm not going to take any real strong position because I don't know much about it. And we're going to admit that because we're pretty educated people and we tend to have individual individual responsibility and do the right thing. And yeah. those hosts are not doing that right now. And, and they really are hurting our legislative efforts. I saw a huge reaction from conservative legislators immediately after those radio hosts did what they did. They all started running for the, for the shadows and for the cracks in the floor. Um, it was scary stuff because of what their own conservative hosts were saying. So those two hosts out in the Milwaukee area, conservative people, probably did more harm to constitutional carry in the fight there than any other people out there, the anti-gunners or anyone else. The ones scary. who are supposedly on our, right. on our side. That's right. And they should be ashamed of themselves, to be honest. Wow. Well, Darren, listen, man, I really appreciate you coming in on a Friday night, no less. No less. Fortunately, we were just down the street, so we came in. And uh, I wanted to shock you. I wanted to surprise you because normally I call you from about 2,000 miles away. Yeah, you did. Well, listen, I appreciate uh, you coming in, and we'll uh, plan on talking next week. Sounds like it'll be a busy one in Wisconsin again. Indeed it will be, and we're looking to make some real progress, and hopefully we're going to have a nice announcement on uh, Thursday morning to, uh, for our members, and it should be a good one. All right. Darren Lasort, uh, NRA ILA's manager of hunting policy and uh, shepherd of right to carry uh, for the NRA in the uh, great state of Wisconsin.